Thanks for joining us today for this important lupus research and treatment update. What is interferon? Well, I'll give you my answer as a physician, but I really think I should bow to the incredible expertise of the other two panelists for that question. As you've heard uh, Virginia say, interferon is a cytokine, and you can think of that as a messenger molecule that goes from one cell to send a signal to another, like a Morse code transmits a message. The word actually uh, means, um, you know, kind is from kinesis, meaning movement. And the idea is it's a message that moves from one place to another. And interferon is one of the cytokines. And as you've heard Virginia say, it's important in the response to viral infections and turns out to also be very important in uh, the innate and adaptive immune system connection. So there are many different types of interferon. Uh, and the category that we're mostly talking about today is called type one. And the easy way for us to remember that is that all the members of that family, and there are a lot, actually use a single uh, receptor. So uh, the, the signal is sent by one cell to another. In order to be received, it has to uh, uh, bind to another molecule on that receptor, which is like the antenna that receives that signal. And all the many uh, molecules of the type 1 interferon family use the same exact receptor. So you, you mentioned that it's used to fight viral infections. So you mean if I get the flu or if a patient gets COVID, which is a viral infection, or uh, if a patient gets the common cold, um, the body produces interferon to kind of help protect uh, the patient's body from those disorders? Yeah, absolutely right. And we know actually that interferon is responsible for some of the symptoms that people get when they have a viral infection. We know that because interferons have actually been used uh, as treatments for some other diseases. So there are some diseases for which uh, patients have been injected with interferon as part of their therapy. And these patients get flu-like symptoms. They get low grade temperature, they feel tired, their muscles ache. These are very familiar sounding symptoms to our patients with lupus. And um, it may well be uh, that that's uh, the reason that these symptoms are so common between a viral infection, flu-like symptom, and a disease like lupus. What is actually the difference in interferon in people who do have lupus versus people who don't have lupus? You know, I think a major difference between interferon in health and interferon in lupus is that when interferon is produced in the setting of a, an infection with a virus, it does a very good job, but over a very short period of time, probably just a couple of days. So the interferon that's produced when we get a virus infection orchestrates a, a, a real battle on the part of the immune system with the virus. And if all goes well, the virus is cleared and we get back to health. The issue in lupus is that that interferon and all of the effects of the interferon can go on for years. It's really striking that, um, you know, we can, Virginia looks at children and we look at adults with lupus and the majority of those patients have evidence of production of interferon and its effects on the immune system over months and years. So there's something that we're all trying to understand, or maybe it's many things that are driving that production of interferon. And perhaps there are also um, regulators of interferon that aren't behaving quite right in lupus. So Virginia, it's not that lupus patients are producing an imperfect form of interferon. It's that lupus patients have too much of it too much of the time? Is that a, a way to describe it? That is exactly it uh, again. Um, as Peggy very well explained, patients with lupus just cannot turn off the production of interferon and the signals of having uh, interferon activity are there for, for a very long time. So let me know if I have this right. Um, even though we're focused on the importance of interferon, it's really not the only culprit. It's kind of a cascade of different immune events, which ultimately lead to a patient getting lupus. And one thing leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another. Um, do I have that right? I think, I think that's very, very true. And some of the most interesting research 
going on now is looking very, very early in the development of lupus. So there are ways to pick up um, early autoimmunity or early production of interferon before a patient even gets the full-fledged clinical manifestations of lupus. And those sorts of efforts are starting to teach us about you know, what are some of the risks for, for developing lupus and, and even how might we think about controlling progression towards full-fledged lupus. Uh, we, we hope you enjoyed this. We hope you found it edifying and we look forward to visiting with you again in the future. Thanks everybody.